Hello everyone, welcome back to another discussion dynamics. Today we will start a new topic, which is kinetics of rigid bodies. But we will start it slowly, because today we will not talk about any motion. We will rather talk about some uh, mechanical property of the body, which is moment of inertia. And then we will talk about parallel axis theorem. And plan for today, plan for today are two brief lecture reviews and then two examples. So, without further ado, let's dive straight into our discussion. So this is the first brief lecture review I prepared. I just would like to calculate with you a moment of inertia of this ring. Mm. I think that that was already covered during the lecture, right? But I wanna do it one more time if, if you don't if you don't mind. Mm. So what do we have in here? They ask us to determine the moment of inertia about z axis of the thin ring of mass m shown. Okay, and in here we have an isometric view, and in here we have a top view of our ring. So let's see what, what we know. We know mass of the ring, we know radius, we know T, we know delta, and we also know that our ring is thin. And that means that rho is constant. That means that mass density or density of the mass uh, is evenly distributed. Mm, uh, along the mm, along the ring. Okay, so I think that by definition, our moment of inertia about z axis is following: i z is integral r squared d m over over the entire mass. So I think that I owe you what that d m is. If you look at the drawing on the right, dm is this little uh, little mass. We call it infinitesimal mass. This is dm. Okay. Mm. So basically, you can see what I'm doing. I am basically chopping our little uh, our ring into those little dm's, and I will just integrate uh, over them. Yes. So I think that now I would like to express dm in such form because that infinitesimal mass is actually rho times infinitesimal volume. Is that true? I think so. So I can write in here integral r squared rho dv, and I must change my integration bounds, yes, from mass to volume. Then I can also write that our infinitesimal volume is actually t delta r d theta, where d theta is ob obviously this angle. This is theta, and this is d theta. Sorry. D theta is that little, 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 little angle. So I can write in here, or maybe here, integral over r to the power of 3 t rho or t uh, delta rho d theta. And integration bounds for our theta are obviously from 0 to 2 pi, as you can see. So I can put 0 and 2 pi in here. And by the way, our integrand is constant. All of these guys does not change at all with theta. This is constant. So in here I can write 2 pi r to the power of 3 t delta rho. Okay, guys, and now we go back. Now we go back. What is expression for the entire entire volume of this, of this object? I think that it will be 2 pi r t delta. I believe so. Yeah, 
So in here we can actually write v rho r squared. And what's the expression for the entire mass? It's rho times v. So in here we can write m r squared. And our job is done. This is the moment of inertia of that thin ring about z axis. Iz is equal to m r squared. Any questions? Okay, so maybe one of my comments. This is the this is the way you can inter you can come up with moment of inertia of any object, right? For example, thin ring. For example, a sphere. For example, a disc, bar. Uh, yeah. So if you wanna, uh, but we have engineering tables, right? We have our pages with equations. Yes, and all of them, uh, all of these moment of inertia of these simple simple shaped objects are already summarized there. I hope you not notice that already, right? So if you just want to check if they are true, you can follow this, this procedure and you, you will come up with the same, same formulas that you can find in those engineering pages. Okay, mm, any question? Yeah. By the way, this is about center of mass. This is moment of inertia about center of mass. Or CON. So very specific point of our body. In my second second lecture review, I would like to show you how to calculate moment of inertia about arbitrary point. Okay, so let's assume that we have our rigid body. Of arbitrary shape, as you can see. And our rigid body has mass m, and we also have center of mass here, let's say. Why not? C is our center of mass. C O M. So these are our knowns. We know mass, and we also know moment of inertia about center of mass. We know it because we know how to calculate it, yeah? We did it on the previous board. And I would like to know what is moment of inertia about arbitrary point A. Let's say that that point will be maybe here. Why not? So I need one more variable in order, in order to be able to calculate it. I need this distance. I need distance D. So this is also known. Okay, and this is the expression. IA is equal to IC plus MD squared. That's all. This is par parallel axis theorem. Or in some countries, it's called Steiner's theorem. Any questions? We will use this expression today three times. I don't see any questions. So what do you want to do? Do you want to do example number one? Okay, let's do example number one. Since the problem statement is so short, I will read it, okay? Uh, so in here we have a uniform disk of radius r and mass m, and it pivots about point A. Uh, authors of that problem ask us to determine the moment of inertia about, about uh, axis A. All right, so what, what do we know? We know m, we know radius of that disk, and we also know important information that, that this is uniform. And again, that means that the mass is distributed evenly 
uh, in that disk. So I think that if you look at those engineering tables, you will find that IC of the disk is equal to one half MR squared. I believe so. But they, this is not, not what they ask us for. They ask us to find IA of the disk. So let's use parallel access theorem. IC plus M times some distance squared. And that distance is obviously here. The distance between points C and A. So I can put R in here. And I can solve. Okay, our IA is one and a half MR squared. That's it. Any questions? No questions, right? Okay, so let's do another example. Again, this problem statement is short, so I will read it, if you don't mind. So in here we have a, an uh, a, a assembly, right? We have uniform disk of radius R and uniform cylinder bar of length L, and they are welded to one another here. Also, let me move that point B somewhere else. And they both has both of these uh, structures have mass M, and we are asked to find um, moment of inertia about point A uh, of the assembly. Um, okay, so what do we know? We know mass. We know radius, and we also know that the disk is uniform. And we also know L, and we know that bar is also uniform. So that uniform also means that center of mass of these two bodies is in their geometric center. So point B is center of mass of bar, and point C is center of mass of disk. Okay, so I just wanted to. So they ask us to find I of assembly. So I just wanted to know, guys, that. Oh, about point A also. So. Moment of inertia is so called additive quantity. So that means that we can actually express it as sum of moments of inertia of bar and disk. Pretty convenient, don't you think? That we can come up with moment of inertia of a very complicated system as a sum of moments of inertia of those smaller, smaller parts we know, we know how to deal with. So our job is to find these two guys. We have to find this one, and we have to find this one. Okay, so let's start with IA of the bar. So we're going to use Steiner's theorem, because IA of the bar will be IB of the bar plus M times some distance squared. And that distance will be here. That distance is this green distance, which is L half. Okay. Uh, does any of you remember what is moment of inertia of the bar? You don't? No worries. It's 112 ml squared. 112 ml squared plus one-fourth ml squared is equal to one-third ml squared. Okay, guys, we're done with 50% of the problem. This is known. 
Now let's focus on the disk. So IA of the disk is again IC of the disk plus M times some distance squared. And that distance, oh, that distance will be longer because I believe that it will be this one. So this orange distance is, I think, L plus R. I think I'm not, not wrong. So I should put L plus R in here. Okay, and moment of inertia of the disk we found during the first lecture review. So this will be M, R, no, this, ah oh no, that was a ring, sorry guys. So this is moment of inertia of the ring, but this is half of that. <laughs> plus MR squared plus ML squared plus 2MRL. Mm, okay, let's simplify. So that will be three and a half, uh, one and a half MR squared plus ML squared plus 2M. RL. Okay, so we found the other guy. Now let's put, put it together. I think that I can maybe make that font, font size smaller. Okay, now I have some, some place to write. Okay, so our moment, moment of inertia of assembly is equal to One third ML squared plus ML squared plus three and a half MR squared plus plus this, and this is equal to four divided by three ML squared plus three and a half M R squared plus the last component. Okay, this is the answer. That's it, right? I think so. I didn't make any mistake. No, everything is fine. Okay, I'm pretty sure that this is the answer. <laughs> um, any questions? That's all for today. Thank you for today. Have a nice weekend. Bye-bye.